Hi, my name is Max Colbert with the Edison Group. Uh, I'm joined today with Greg McKee, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Trip Therapeutics. And today we are going to be discussing unlocking the potential of uh, psychedelics for the use of chronic pain. So, Greg, could you actually speak to the genesis of Trip Therapeutics and the rationale behind applying psilocybin to treat chronic pain? versus other psychedelics. Right, so a lot of companies uh, in this field are working on a wide variety of different psychedelic drugs, right? So MDMA, psilocybin, uh, DMT, and other chemistries. But we felt that the chemistry on psilocybin and its derivatives had the most history, had the longest track record, had a great safety profile, and also frankly had a lot of utility from other clinical studies. So we felt like the, the base of information behind it really had it has it well suited to be utilized in, in in the field to begin with and then second of all we felt that there was a and believe that there's a huge potential to utilize psychedelics well outside of traditional mental health diseases some of the work that we've uncovered on our own and also through our academic collaborations pointed us to chronic pain so we put a large emphasis on, on chronic pain and also eating disorders for initial indications what makes your psilocybin program different than the other psilocybin programs in development? Right, so a, a number of different things. Um, so first, as we just mentioned, the, in the therapeutic indications, right? So as compared to a lot of other companies who are working in depression, um, anxiety, um, and other areas, PTSD, for example, we felt that working in chronic pain and eating disorders were two high unmet medical need areas where there could be a lot of activity. And then secondly, we have a novel formulation and also a novel route of administration that we've been working on for a period of time that we'll be able to speak to the specifics of at some point down the road. Um, but we're very excited about what that new formulation and what the new route of administration can mean to patients to make a much more consistent and much better experience when they're under the influence of these chemistries. Mm -hmm. And Greg, who are ideal candidates for the use of psychedelics to treat chronic pain? Right, so we're, we're focused on a very specific um, area of pain called nociplastic or chronic pain that typically is very CNS oriented, right? So there is a very strong mental component to that type of pain. So these are patients, for example, with fibromyalgia, with complex regional pain syndrome, with phantom limb um, pain. Um, so, you know, of, of those three, for example, phantom limb pain is probably the easiest to, to wrap your head around. So those are individuals that are amputees, and there's about two million or so people a year that have amputations, unfortunately. And those, about 60% of those individuals have pain, uh, residual pain in those limbs, right? So in a, in a leg, for example, or an arm that's been removed for whatever reason, there's still pain in those areas. So clearly that's, that's coming from some sort of misfiring of their brain, and we believe that the psychedelic, that psilocybin in particular, will allow them to, to reset those neural networks and hopefully, hopefully resolve their pain. Mm -hmm. Do you see psychedelics being a whole body solution or targeted to specific types? It, it's given that that the mechanism of action is uh, towards the central nervous system. I, I would characterize it as being a whole body um, solution. Uh, it, it is addressing a very specific type of pain, as we mentioned, uh, but it, it is not. It's not. It's more of a systemic type of approach. Um, although a lot of that information will will come forward in the clinical studies that we're mm -hmm. working on from from here here, here on forward. Sure, and, and to date, there's been little research conducted on the use of psychedelics to treat chronic pain. How does that mm -hmm. lack of research affect the trial designs of psychedelics uh, companies moving forward? Right, so there's, that, that's right, there's very, been very little information so far, or minimal amount of information on clinical studies that have been done, run in these, these areas to date. There's been some, however, so for example, Joel Castellanos from UC San Diego has done a great compilation of all the historic academic studies that have been done in chronic pain. And there's been, you know, call it a dozen or so um, in the last, say, 40 years or so. Uh, modest, you typically open label studies, um, small numbers of patients and so forth. But what it's done for, for us in terms of clinical trial design is it's um, pushed us to really answer some very basic questions initially. At the moment, there's a lot more questions than answers in the field, but for our studies, we're answering the most fundamental question of whether or not there's activity of psychedelics in these specific uh, areas. And then once we have an answer to that, then we can begin to, to look at a lot of the other types of questions that are around, including 
potentially the correlation between things like functional MRI mm -hmm. and EEG and, and brain activity with therapeutic outcomes. Uh, mechanistically, we're curious about how some of the receptors work and um, other types of things that will allow us to create, uh, create some information around the nuances of how psychedelics work in, uh, in these therapeutic areas. Hmm. So psychological support is a key factor in psychedelic treatment. Would for you sure. Would mm. describe trip therapeutics psychotherapy model as you prepare for your phase 2A clinical trial? There, there's a couple of different approaches. Um, our view has been that we need to tailor the psychotherapy for each one of the therapeutic indications. We are following a fairly traditional model of pre-treating patients, monitoring them while they're being dosed with the therapeutic agent, and then running uh, integration sessions post-treatment. However, we're tailoring the, the specific work that's being done in those sessions uh, for the patients with specific indications. So the, the therapeutic modality for phantom limb, say for example, versus complex regional pain uh, syndrome uh, is, is somewhat different um, given that the, the source of the pain um, is a little bit unique or the original source that is is unique. Um, and their affliction is, is, has got some differentiating factors. So we, it is tailored to, to the different therapeutic indications that we're looking at. All right, Greg McKee, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Trip Therapeutics, where can people find you? Yes, um, yeah, so, so we actually just rolled out a new website and you can find us at www.triptherapeutics.com with more information about all of our clinical studies that we're undertaking. Amazing, thank you so much for your time again. Great to be here, thanks, Max.